And our top focus on the way on right now. Israeli military is preparing to send its troops in Rafah, which is the only corner of the strip where most of the 2.3 million Palestinians are taking refuge. A senior Israeli defense official said that the military is poised to evacuate the Palestinians and are ready to carry out the invasion at Hamas holdouts in the southern part of the territory. An Israeli government spokesperson said that it was moving ahead with a ground operation, but no timeline was given for the same. Well, according to the official, IDF has bought 40,000 tents, each capable of accommodating at least 10 to 12 people to house Palestinians who are relocating from Rafah in advance of an assault. And now all that remains is orders from the Israeli Prime Minister, which will decide the fate of the residents who are already displaced from their homes and they're weighing their options of fleeing again and securing a place to live. Israeli warplanes pounded the northern Gaza in one of the fiercest attacks after weeks of relative calm. The city of Beit Laya came under massive shelling for a second day on Wednesday. This comes the day after the Israeli military ordered residents of four districts as dangerous combat zone. And on Wednesday, Hamas released a video of a 23-year-old Israeli-American hostage, Hersh Goldberg Paulin. He was abducted from the Nova Music Festival in southern Israel during Hamas's October attack. Now, the undated video showed Hersh missing a lower arm, but otherwise apparently healthy. He was shown saying that he had sustained serious injuries during the October 7th attack after he tried using his body as a shield to protect himself and other civilians. I was arrested on October 7th at the Nova concert in Raim. I went out seeking entertainment with my friends. Instead, I found myself struggling to survive with serious injuries all over the body. Nevertheless, I took it upon myself to protect myself and the people who were afraid around me because there was no one to protect us. Netanyahu and his government, you should be ashamed because you neglected us along with thousands of other citizens. The parents of Goldberg Paulin made a plea to negotiating parties and told their son to stay strong. Seeing a video of Hirsch today is overwhelming. We're relieved to see him alive, but we are also concerned about his health and well-being, as well as that of all of the other hostages and all of those suffering in this region. And we're here today with a plea to all of the leaders of the parties who have been in negotiating to date. And Hirsch, if you can hear this, we heard your voice today for the first time in 201 days. And if you can hear us, I am telling you, we are telling you, we love you, stay strong, survive. Demonstrators calling for the release of hostages held in Gaza waited outside a synagogue in Jerusalem as far-right National Security Minister Itamar bin Givir was seen leaving the area. The demonstrations comes after Hamas released the video of Hesh. Tensions are also heating up on the Israel-Lebanon border. Israeli forces on Wednesday carried out offensive action in Lebanon after launching cross-border strikes targeting Hamas's ally Hezbollah. Israel's defense minister, Yoav Galan, said, and I'm quoting here, many forces are deployed on the border and IDF forces are carrying out offensive action currently throughout southern Lebanon. Now, the strikes came after the Iran-backed Hezbollah movement said it fired a fresh barrage of rockets across the border on Wednesday, following a strike that killed two civilians, which the group blamed on Israel. Cross-border exchanges of fire have fled between the Israeli army and Hezbollah since Hamas's October 7th attack on Israel, which triggered the ongoing war in Gaza.
And from on this, we're now being joined by Brigadier General Dr. Mayor Elrin, Senior Researcher at the Institute of National Security Studies. Welcome, Tel Aviv University. Welcome to the show, Brigadier General Elrin. I want to first start by asking you that Israel says that it is moving ahead with the Rafah offensive, where 2.5 million people are taking refuge. How possibly can the civilians be evacuated in such a short span of time? And the bigger question being that where will they go as Egypt has ruled out any influx of refugees? Well, I think that it's a, a very important question, and uh, I thank you for that. Uh, first of all, we're talking about roughly one million people in the area of Rafa, and they have been asked uh, to evacuate the place where they are positioned right now, further to the north, to a designated area of shelter, will be provided for them, very similar to what happened in the earliest stages of the war. This is a very important thing. It will take some time. It is going to be uh, in concert with the Egyptians on one hand and with the Americans on the other hand, so as to keep the humanitarian aspects as, a, as, much, as much as possible. Only once this is happening, this is my understanding of the situation, the IDF forces will strike uh, Rafa in accordance with the objectives of the war, which are basically Two things. Number one, to dismantle Hamas as a military and a political entity in Gaza. And the second thing, of course, is the release of our hostages held by the Hamas authorities. This is in line with, with what Israel has been uh, saying ever since the war started 202 days ago. And this is in accordance with that. And this will happen probably not today or tomorrow or the day after, but sometime in the future, closer rather than further. Right, Brigadier Elrin, Elrin, you speak of the two objectives of uh, the Israeli military, but the pertinent question right now is that how possibly can the IDF differentiate between Hamas and civilians? We've seen how Hamas has been using civilians as human shields in the war so far. Well, as you correctly suggested, Hamas is uh, totally intertwined together with the civilians. You can't really differentiate very easily and very quickly who is a Hamas uh, a terrorist and who is a uh, civilian that is uh, not really engaged. The problem is that we need to differentiate between them. It's very, very difficult. That's why we want the people in, Ga in Rafa and around Rafa to get out of the area, to save themselves, to save their lives and their families, and to be in a safe zone further to the north of where the battle is going to take place. Right, Brigadier General Eldrin, thank you so much for taking our time and joining us here on Beyond. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.